Could we see it? Certainly. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're going to be counting down our picks for the top 20 worst cars of all time. That's not right. For this list, we'll be ranking the biggest lemons, those vehicles that have earned infamous reputations for poor quality, manufacturing, or design. Did you ever drive or own one of these cars? Feel like defending them? Let us know down in the comments. Number 20. The Chevrolet SSR It doesn't exactly spell doom for a car when a certain model year fails to sell according to projected estimates. Holy sh The new Chevrolets, an American revolution. But in the case of the Chevy SSR, that is exactly what happened. Chevy's attempt to combine a pickup truck and a sports car didn't go according to plan, selling less than 10,000 units a year for the three years they were manufactured. Not even the rather luxurious interior or the addition of a tough V8 engine with increased horsepower during the SSR's final year could save this Chevy experiment from going down as a mistake. Number 19. The Ford Mustang II There's a lot of brand loyalty when it comes to the world of car fandom. There's also more than a fair share of good and not-so-good-natured arguments about which brand reigns supreme. That said, nearly every fan of the Ford Mustang can agree on one thing, that atrocious second generation. The Ford Mustang II arrived at the absolute worst time for a gas-guzzling muscle car, the 1970s energy crisis. The Mustang II was designed with this era in mind, striving to cut down on gasoline usage and cost. However, the car also cut down on quality, having been built from a Ford Pinto platform that Mustang fans immediately rejected. And you know what? They still talk about how bad this one was. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Number 18. The Saturn Ion Hey, here's a question. Was every car developed by Saturn bad? We're tempted to say yes, but even if that's not entirely true, there's no denying the disappointment that was the Saturn Ion. Introducing the Saturn Ion, specifically designed and engineered for whatever's next. This compact car was sort of the last gasp for a brand that initially bore some promise, or at the very least owner excitement and loyalty, until it didn't. Look no further than the Ion's cheap plastic panel exterior. The car didn't handle great either, and a recall in 2014 for faulty ignition switches, long after the Ion's discontinuation, just added more fuel to this disappointing fire. Number 17. The Eagle Premier The Eagle Premier was initially co-developed by the American Motors Corporation alongside French auto manufacturer Renault, before Chrysler took over duties in 1987. Next to new Eagle Premier, the competition just fades away. The Eagle Premier did have some things going for it, including a fancy interior package, and received positive reviews and encouragement at the time of its release. However, many drivers found the placement of a gear shift on the dash to be a head-scratching move. The Premier also wasn't great on gas, and the dash in and of itself didn't always work. Really a shame. And if your customers are shopping for value, I have a strong feeling they'll choose the Eagle Premier. Number 16. The Dodge Neon Say hello to Neon. The Neon has represented several brands over the years, from Dodge and Chrysler to Plymouth Motors. The car has also been called a few other things by car owners and critics. Junk is one, unsafe is another. Specifically, the first and second generation Neons received poor to marginal marks for safety on the road. The side impact tests on these Neons also proved that this car provided little to no safety to drivers unfortunate enough to be involved in a crash. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety summed it up best in 2005 when they referred to the Dodge Neon as a small car to be avoided. So what did it get us? A little embarrassed, actually. Number 15. The Maserati Bi-Turbo First Generation This is a Maserati Bi-Turbo. The aforementioned energy crisis in the 1970s affected nearly every overseas sports car manufacturer that was seeking a foothold in North America. As a result, companies including Italy's Maserati were forced to pivot, leaving behind speed for performance and luxury. Enter the Maserati by Turbo, which eventually did find its footing, but not before stumbling with its first generation. Car buyers were initially excited for this model, but the by Turbo sales soon slumped, thanks to their reputation as being unreliable hunks of junk that continually broke down and required maintenance. The Maserati by Turbo would see some improvements made and continue to be sold into the early 90s. But the less said about the originals, the better. Number 14. The BMW Isetta You know the old saying, it's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there? The same can be applied to those cute little microcars like the BMW Isetta. We take them for a quick little spin, but you wouldn't want to crash in one. 
Seriously, the 1955 models were so tiny that they'd practically pass for bumper cars. This meant that any accident at basically any speed was a recipe for disaster and certain death. Because if you push the pedal too hard, the whole thing will fall on its face. Keep in mind, the 1955 Isetta was manufactured by Italian group Iso Rivolta, which initially specialized in building refrigerators, scooters, and tiny trucks. What were they doing making cars, you might ask? Good question. We have no idea. Number 13, the Cadillac Cimarron. You might win this. A new Cadillac! The four-door sedan market is a big sandbox, with a lot of different companies all vying for some attention and playtime. The Cimarron was Cadillac's attempt at competing with other four-door imports that were hungry for a slice of the market share. Unfortunately, the Cimarron was basically a Chevy Cavalier in disguise, a rebranding that stands today as a colossal failure for Cadillac. The Cimarron's reputation is marred with multiple black eyes for performance and reliability, and sluggish sales reflected that the car buying public was not going to be fooled. Number 12, the Edsel Corsair. The Edsel division of the Ford Motor Company already doesn't enjoy a very good reputation as it is, never mind bringing the 1958 Corsair into the discussion. You never saw a car like the 58 Edsel. Never? Never. Edsel cars were intended to assist Ford in gaining an edge on an increasingly competitive market. But it did the exact opposite, thanks to cars like the Corsair, which were basically Mercury's in disguise. The Corsair essentially priced themselves out of the market too, falling victim to a disastrous Ford rollout that earned the Edsel its rep as being overhyped, under-delivering mistakes that never really had an audience. Number 11, the Pontiac Aztec. Not just a car, it's a tent on wheels. But how can we afford this? We only have $938 for the whole month. I only paid 400 bucks for this bad boy. When it comes to cars, looks aren't everything. The Pontiac Aztec, in the estimation of some who chose to defend it, did some things right under the hood and with regards to performance. The Aztec's primary criticism amongst detractors is its appearance, which many have claimed to be outright ugly. The Aztec is a mid-size SUV that looks like a minivan meeting a station wagon, and Pontiac's intent was to appeal to a Generation X era customer. However, the plasticky Aztec wasn't cheap, nor was it winning any major awards for safety. It just did okay with a lot of things, but many can agree that it most certainly fell short in the looks department. People like to joke, but I really, really like this car. She's sturdy as all hell. Number 10, the Hummer H2. Everything old was new again when the Hummer fad hit back in the early 2000s. Fuel efficiency was at the top of everyone's mind with regards to the Hummer, or rather the lack thereof. This civilian adaptation of a military-grade vehicle embodied a bigger is better mentality, but it had zero forethought with regards to how a Hummer would adapt to everyday driving. Granted, the H2 did possess impressive horsepower, but consumers largely rejected the idea of purchasing this kind of vehicle for the long term, and the H2 was pretty much relegated to a status of, remember that? Number 9. The Reliant Robin Mark I Different countries have different needs when it comes to their cars. The Reliant Robin was extremely popular in the UK during its production history, despite it basically serving as a three-wheeled death trap. And you always have to remember the undeniable fact that in certain situations, from emergency avoidances to sudden crosswinds, three wheels stand too good a chance of being less stable than four. You heard that right. The Reliant Robin had three wheels and its plastic outer shell provided little protection in an accident. In addition, the Reliant Robin was unsteady and also contained an underwhelming low power engine. Oh! Help! Again, help! In the end, it unintentionally became one of the most WTF automobile decisions ever made. Number 8. The Trabant To be fair, the East German auto manufacturer Trabant did make some improvements to the four models of their brand over the course of a three-decade-plus lifespan. However, this competition to the Volkswagen Beetle is largely seen through a modern lens as a relic of the Cold War. The Trabant's initial two-stroke engine made it unreliable, underpowered, and basically a smokehouse on wheels. The brand does have its nostalgic fans today, primarily on the rally race circuit, but the Trabant largely went out of style shortly after the Berlin Wall came down in 1989. Well, what is the appeal of Trabant to you? I mean, they're never a high spot in automotive technology, were they? Purely history. As technology, they stink. They are appalling. They have nothing interesting about them whatsoever, technologically. Rather the opposite. Number 7. The AMC Pacer 
The legacy of AMC is complicated, with many today admiring the ingenuity of their ideas and a certain sense of daring associated with the company's openness to appealing to a smaller section of the market. Unfortunately, the word small also tends to be associated with AMC's legacy of compact cars. The Gremlin and Hornet come to mind and were hits among customers, but the negative connotations to AMC in this regard often lie with one of their flagships, the Pacer. It's Pacerific! Despite the Pacer's admitted fuel efficiency, size, and presence within popular culture, its straight-six engine was deemed out of fashion even back in 1975, with many of AMC's competitors adopting V6 engines. Uh, they've discovered they didn't need most of their big car anyway. Number 6. The Chevy Vega the idea of buying American was a big talking point back in the 1970s, as imports from Japan and other countries were making headway into the United States. Well, we think Vega makes more sense than every Chevrolet. And it's easy to see why, too, since cars like the Chevy Vega were severely impacting the reputations of American automakers. It comes with bucket seats, front disc brakes, and a highly responsive 140 cubic inch overhead cam engine. This subcompact was a rust bucket, plain and simple, but the problems with the Vega didn't end there. There were recalls, safety issues, and the fact that the Vega seemed to spend more time in the repair shop than on the road. Engines backfired, front ends were coming apart, the Vega was flawed from inception and design right on through to the assembly line. Number 5. The DMC DeLorean It's the car that defines cult classic, and that underlines a general theme in this list. Even the worst cars have their fans. The DMC DeLorean is an objectively bad car, with an infamous reputation when it comes to its rear-engine build and shoddy quality. Yet, that reputation is also iconic, thanks to the DeLorean's sleek 1980s design and gullwing doors. Its appearance as the time machine in the Back to the Future franchise basically cemented the DeLorean as a talking point for all time. Yet, this doesn't change the quality control issue. Doc! Marty! <laughs> you made it! Yeah! Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. Ah, uh, well, it's a DeLorean, right? Stay with what me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. The DMC DeLorean was a slow, mechanically challenged beast that defined the phrase style over substance. Drive the DeLorean. Live the dream today. Number four, the Amphicar. It's just something really unique that came out of the 60s. On one hand, the idea of marketing an amphibious car to the masses was a gutsy move. However, the Quant Group's Amphicar wasn't exactly great at being a car or a boat. Although it could zip around fine from town to town, the Amphicar was also known to leak while being submerged. It was also painfully slow in the water, only musting up a paltry 7 miles per hour top speed. The Amphicar also required a lot of maintenance, including greasing should the owner want to venture between water and dry land. Still, the Amphicar is nothing if not unique. Unfortunately, it just wasn't practical. It takes quite a bit in terms of reversing and forwarding and using the front wheels to uh, gain yourself around boats, pontoons, and docks. Number three, the Yugo. Ta -da! <laughs> this vehicle from Zastava Automobiles failed to make headway internationally after an attempt to infiltrate the US market back in the 80s. Today, these affordable imports possess a fan base that pushes back against the Yugo's reputation for poor quality, claiming owner use and misuse as the culprit. Buy a little freedom, buy a Yugo. Yugo, America's most affordable new car. However, the Yugo's notoriously finicky timing belt on several models required maintenance every 40,000 miles. So, does the Yugo deserve reappraisal, or are they deserving of their infamy? Maybe the answer is somewhere in the middle. Reliability is his second name. Dependability and safety now have a totally new meaning. Do not hold your horses. Your dream of a tough, dependable car can finally be fulfilled. Number 2. The Crossley Hotshot The Crossley Hotshot was very much indicative of post-war American engineering. The desire to drive fast and live a little, enter the baby boom, and enjoy the good life. They have four-wheel disc brakes. It's got some vintage Bragi speed parts on it. However, was the hotshot unsafe at any speed, to paraphrase Ralph Nader's infamous book? Maybe, especially when the engine was concerned. This tin-stamped four-cylinder vehicle could come apart from overheating, and the hotshot's exterior design made it a death trap in an accident. Thankfully, Crossley's entrance into the sports car market wasn't very sporty, and it couldn't make it much faster than 60 miles per hour off the assembly line. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Ford Pinto. The Ford Motor Company tried their hands at creating a subcompact vehicle back in 1971 and failed miserably. Today, the Pinto is most infamously known for its rear engine design, a decision that potentially possessed explosive results should any Pinto be rear-ended by another car. Not enough thought was put into protecting the Pinto to this end, and the car received middling reviews even before this controversy. Ultimately, the Pinto's legacy combines a lack of foresight and poor reactionary behavior on the part of Ford to underline the idea that this car simply wasn't any good from the jump. It was the perfect storm of bad ideas. Compare Pinto. It may be the best small car buy in America. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.